Hello, everybody. It's Ron and Hope Unfiltered, Real Raw Relevant. Ronald, what are you doing? <clears throat> You've been fussing at me because I got strangled right before we started. <laughs> <coughs> Ron, <sighs> you live strangled. I strangled on the water. It went down the wrong pipe. You say that every time. No, I know. I've never said that on this show. Not on this show, but period. That's the you first time it. they've ever seen me get strangled. No, it's not. It is. It is. <clears throat> Ron. But I'm about ready. Turn your head and cough that way. <clears throat> okay, I'm good. Oh, for I'm now. Good. I got it. Okay. He said, I got it. <laughs> Go look at my messages years ago. I used to cough a lot. Now I never cough. You do still cough. No, not my messages. No not more, as bad as you no. used to. You listened to it a long time ago. It's okay. totally different now. But anyway, we're talking about communication. Yeah. Tell them where you want to go. Effective communication. What does that mean? Communication that works in your marriage, where you understand where this, I'm saying something, you get it, you receive it, you understand it, you don't judge it. There's a lot of dynamics to communication, yes, it is. though. Especially it between is. men and women. Especially Guys, y'all need to hang around. This is going to be good. This it really is really going to be good. She's because got a lot, she's got a lot of stuff to talk about. The lack of communication, bad communication, can make or break a relationship. Well, you said something right before this. It's unscripted. It's not planned, but you said something for it. You said proactive communication. Well, I, I, pre, I, I dare say a lot of people never even heard that phrase. Right. Proactive communication keeps you from reactive communication. Right. Reactive communication usually is never positive. No. Reactive is usually negative in its substance, mm -hmm. and it is always... High tension. It, it, responding to communication that didn't take place or took place wrong. Yeah. And so it's emotional, it's, it's not logical, it's not reasonable, because usually when you have reactive communication, somebody's upset. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I think it's very powerful what you talked about. Proactive communication sets expectations. It does. What has Ron been saying for 20 years or more? That disappointment is the child of false expectations. So if proactive communication can set expectations appropriately, there's a lot less disappointment in it the It is. House. It is. I was doing uh, marriage counseling this morning for a couple on our staff, and that's all we tackled was communication. And most of the time in marriages, one person is way better than the other person in their verbal skills. I think that's normal. And that is normally the women because we have more words in our tank. Um, we can get highly emotional when we're communicating and that immediately shuts a man down. Does. Because he is not going into an argument that he cannot win. Yeah, let me let me. And it's not about winning. That's yeah, not the goal of right. effective communication. Is winning. It's understanding. It's not even the goal of an argument. No. In our marriage conference, I teach people. I, I have a little session within a session. It's not a whole thing. Just a little, ten minutes, and I talk about how to argue. The goal to argue is the goal to an argument is a solution. It's not to win. That's right. And if you go into an argument to win, you will never find a solution. Right. So there's a way to argue, you know, um, and, and, the, the, and when I say and argue. we did a whole podcast on yeah, that. Yeah, there's disagreements, you know, basically I like to say that better than argue. And I don't, I don't like to ever argue with, with Hope because honestly that, when I feel like me and Hope are really sideways with each other, it affects me. You deal with that better than I do. <laughs> You can pretty much go on with your day. That is not true, you know, Ron. No, you can function, but I mean, when I know, when I know I ain't done something right, or if I feel like you hadn't done something right, it messes with me. Yeah. It messes with my confidence. Yeah. I just, you know, how can any two We're not walk in less, unity. Yeah, how can any two walk lest they agree? And, uh, I, you know, you've talked about in the past, I can be overbearing about trying to get on the same page in agreement, but it truly does destroy my confidence if I feel like me and you are not right. And um, I don't know if other men are that sensitive to that. I am. I'm very sensitive to that part of our relationship. And I'm let's glad just, you are. Let's just talk about some of the dynamics of communication overall. Well, I was telling them this morning, I said the basis, the baseline of good, healthy communication, not just communication, but good, healthy, productive communication is trust. Because I'm not going to be open and honest with you 
if I don't trust that it's going to be received, if I don't trust that you're going to hear me, if I don't feel like that you get me or you want the best for this relationship, I'm going to withhold. And One to ten, where am I on that? Oh, a ten. Eight? No, you're no, a, ten. a ten. Yes, you are. You're a ten. I trust you implicitly. And this is the baseline of trust is character. If you are not a person of character, how can I trust you? I mean, if how can I trust you to communicate with you if I think you lose your temper easily? Or you're going to lash out hurtful things to me. Call you names. Call me names or Bring up belittle the past. me. or You know, that that's not a person of character. And so I was telling them in the counseling this morning, I said, how do you know? what a person of character is. I said, you need to go to the word of God and see what God's characteristics are. He's faithful. He's just, he's true. He's not a liar. I said, and those are the characteristics that we are supposed to strive toward he's not in, easily our Christ, in our Christ likeness. He's not easily angered. He takes no offense. All of those things, which are a part of communication. Also, I would go to the parallel word of character, which is integrity, which means integrated which means I do what I say, I say what I do, I do what I believe, I believe what I say. My belief, I my word, and I my do. I don't change. <clears throat> yeah, my belief, my word, and my do are integrated. So if I'm telling you I'm going to do something, or if I'm telling Hope I believe something, Hope knows all three of those are going to line up. That's right. If, if I tell Hope, Lord, I, Hope, I want us to concentrate the next six months at paying off our credit card debt. I know that you're going to do that. Hope knows I believe it. Hope knows I say it. And then hope knows that... You're going to do whatever it takes We're not to do doing it. that this month. How much money do you need for us to get that one knocked out? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to do what I do. And so that is, that is the part of, of integrity and character that is the baseline of all trust. And there is nothing worse than having to be in a relationship and depend on somebody you don't trust. That's right. That is the most vulnerable. So it makes you 100% want to withhold information. So you withhold it because you don't trust that they're going to do what they say they're going to do with it or that they'll follow through with the decision you made. So you just you just kind of shut down. Honest to goodness, you shut down and you say, I'll just do it myself. I'm going to, this part of my life's going to be this. I'm going to do the money. He's not going to know what's happening with the money. Or he's going to say, you know, I'm going to be the one to do whatever, whatever, because I don't trust her reaction when I bring this to her. Yeah. I would say this. Go, going back to this phrase you came up with, I ain't never heard it before, proactive communication. I like that. I don't know if you read it in the book or if it's yours. Proactive communication minimizes surprises. It does. Um, do you want to go there? We're saying we're real wrong. Really. Can we talk about how we proactively communicate? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't throw you. I don't throw you many surprises. And I'm not talking about birthday or a surprise trip or a gift. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about we do what we do together. I know every marriage don't function like that, but everything Ron and Hope do, we do it together. Our name is on everything together. There is no part of our life that we don't do together. So the fact is, if like yesterday you stayed at home and you wrote in your new book all day, you had to commit your day to focusing on that book. I was here all day having meetings all day. So when we get back and have dinner, I can't go through everything, but I try to brief you on the things and the decisions that were made that day that would pertain to you. Right. That would be important to me. Yes. Because I don't want to come back around and, when did y'all do that? Well, why didn't you tell me? And that's happened many yeah. times and, in and the past. Now, Ron, I look like a fool standing yeah. there, and they were talking about so and so and so, and you hadn't said a word about this. Yep. And let's how be honest. I, how am I so good at telling you that? Because that has happened many, yes, many times. Yes, many times. And, I mean, years past, if I wasn't at the office for whatever particular reason, and they had an executive meeting and things were decided and somebody was because let you go mama, and somebody was Somebody had a field or, trip and you went yeah. on it. You know. So and that ver that frustrated me that you know to be an integral part of the ministry and, not know and what's decisions going on. were made that I didn't know even needed to be made. So we had to alter. We had to adjust. It it makes your job harder. It makes my job harder because I'm talked out yes. by the time I get home. 
and, and but I had to realize if I'm talked out, but there were many of those meetings that involved hope and hope things and things that hope is responsible for and in charge of, that if I don't come home and communicate, it's just a little while before a train wreck's gonna happen. Right. So, you know what, you discipline yourself even when you don't feel, you can kind of tell when I've had it. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. sitting there at the table and I'm kind of, but baby, this happened today and this happened and I know you'd want to know this. And I went ahead and made a decision on this. I hope you don't mind. I can change it if you want me to. Those are the kind of conversations we have. Right. Empty nesters over dinner uh, to try to be proactive to head off a fight. Well, or an I, it's later. easier now. We've been married 33 years and we, we are empty nesters. We're going to, when we come back from this ad, we're going to talk about when it was harder. But right now, Nutrafol, we love you guys so much. Over 80 million men and women in the U.S. experience thinning hair. And I can say that the older you get, you do. Yet it is still not openly talked about, which can make going through it feel really scary, stressful, and Listen, that just adds to the problem. Well, we've tried Nutrafol and it really works. It's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth thickness and visible scalp coverage for men and women. Did you know that there are multiple causes of thinning hair? Nutrafol is the hair growth supplement that goes beyond genetics to target stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle factors that may be impacting your hair. Thinning is different for men and women. Nutrafol has multiple unique formulas for men and women to provide exactly what you need based on your biology and age. Every formula is physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients for reliable results without compromises. In clinical studies, 72% of men saw more scalp coverage and 86% of women saw improved hair growth after six months. That's why Nutrafol is trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. Yeah. You can grow thick, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com yes. and yeah. entering the promo code RAH to save $15 off first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code R-A-H. Thick hair does not run in my family and I just finished my second, second bottle. bottle. Yep. Second bottle of Nutrafol. So when I sit here and tell you that, I am a client myself. Yep. So anyway, so, let me let me go into this before you go into when it was hard. Okay. Because that's that's fair. We probably have a lot. Our statistics show us we have a lot of younger listeners. Our analytics, excuse me, show us that. So I do want to hit people who still got a three-year-old running around in the background because uh, we're not there anymore. Uh, but uh, in the marriage just conference, the thought. Hope, you know, in the marriage conference, sometimes I'll get little five-minute excerpts out of the marriage conference. Men and women are so different in the way they communicate. It's so true. It's And it's, it's not one bad it's almost and not the other good. Yeah, it has nothing to do with it. It's We're just, just different. different. It's yeah. just different. Now, I, w I want you to write this down or take notes, okay? Men usually think first, feel, and then do. We think first. We feel it. And then we go do something. We take action. Women usually feel, feel do, then think, and then think. <laughs> okay? So if we go into an argument, I'm going to tell Hope what I think about it. And I'm immediately, probably, if it's a tense subject, not going to get a logical response. She's going to tell me passionately how she feels about it. Okay? Okay? I have got to understand that this thing hits her emotionally as a woman first. She's got to understand I can't go act out of my emotion. We gotta sit down and at some point or another, we gotta both think, no matter where think falls on the protocol with her, no matter where it falls on the protocol with me, we've got to think our way through this and we gotta come up with a solution. But you gotta know, somebody say, well, we're different at our house, I, he does that and I do. For the most part, right. that's the way men and women are built. Now, 
Hope, what about when you communicate and men's communication, a man's communication is usually somewhat simplistic in nature. He, when he says yeah, he kind of means yeah. When he says no, he kind of means no. You know, uh, he, you know, sometimes there's not a lot of depth. Sometimes there's not a lot of detail. Sometimes communication tends to be broad. How's your date? Good. You know, do you like this? Yeah. You know, he just, and, and the woman's wanting the details. The woman, let me, mm -hmm. I want inside of you. Let mm -hmm. me know. But the woman can say no and it don't mean no. Well, because, let me tell you why. Because we are that emotional. We are the chatty box. We are the flitting around, talking, laughing, wanting to pour everything out at once. And if we haven't gotten a response or if we're upset with you for something, anytime we go to the responding like you guys do, like the no, okay, that ain't real. No. Something's wrong. Yeah, when you start when doing it's, that, when we, we are, When wrong. we're not normal, our normal selves, and we're like, yeah, I don't care, whatever you want, that is not true. But that's because we're upset with you. We're, we're offended at you. You've hurt our feelings. Something is wrong. When I can come near you and you somehow can keep your hands off me, I know something's wrong. Dear Lord in heaven. So that's when I immediately sit down for a talk. Oh, my God. Because I know Rod, normally if I come anywhere around it's you. It's just octopus hands, right? No, I mean, it's, and that's my life. <laughs> that's sure my life. life. That's my life. That's the way we live. Oh, uh, okay. And, uh, but there's sacrifices you make. It is. To be in a relationship. It's and true. I have to deal with the hands and oh, the touch all the time. So, I'm, you know, I, I do know that if your answers are short, yeah, something's, something's wrong. wrong with Oak. Yeah, something wrong. You didn't piss me off yeah. somewhere or another. You know, so if a woman says, "Okay, let me give you this example, honey, our anniversary's coming up. Is there anything special you want to do?" Okay, no, no, that's not. <laughs> that well, you know not why true. we answered no? <laughs> because we had wanted you to already have it planned. <laughs> yep, proactive. Proactive. Yep. Instead of you want like like. Why would you ask me that? Of course, it's our anniversary, you knucklehead. <laughs> you knew we wanted, we should be doing something. So why are you if asking? She are you says sure no, you want to do stuff something? like that. That no is not no. Okay, that no is not no, and you got to understand the language that is being spoken right there and be able to interpret it. And I think that's one thing about communication. Hope is uh, I'm not trying to defend men here. But I've heard a lot don't of women. Start that. I've heard a lot of women say, "You know, he just don't get it. He just he, he just don't. don't get it." And I look at him and say, "No, he don't. He don't get it, because sometimes the language of a woman is undiscernible to a man because of his simplicity. When you hear men go to a ball game, and they've got their six pack of beer and they got their hot dogs and they're off at the NFL ball game, the the conversation does not rise above about age eight. Okay, you can, you can let the girls go out and have Mexican food together. They have solved the world. Yeah. By the time they got there, they have fixed everything. Because we can. Just two totally different types of conversation here. What would you say to that in the home, especially of more newly married couples? Well, discerning one another. Okay. Number I know it's one, a hard you question, need knowledge. But, you know, the Bible says live with her. According to knowledge, that's men, a hard scripture. It is. That's a hard so scripture. So you've got to understand the nature of a woman, men, and that is your responsibility as a Christian man. If you're a Christian man and the head of your house, you need to understand the nature of a woman. Like you said, there's not much to understand about men. Y'all want to be fed, y'all want to be touched, and that's about it. We like sex. That's what I mean. You yeah. like sex. Yeah. I just wanted to say it in PG form. No. You, you want to be touched. No, this is not a PG met, okay. uh, forum. It's raw. Mm -hmm. It's unfiltered, isn't it? Yep. But this is what I told the, the about-to-be-newly-married couple this morning in counseling session. I said, if you will do these three things right here, I said, this, this is all proactive communication that will help you to avoid the reactive arguments that come up because you did not have proactive 
conversation. Number one, it's proactive. And I said, me and Ron will do this. We'll go on a couple of times a year, two or three day trips. And we talk and we discuss and we talk about finances and we talk about, I mean, before we got married, we talked about children and how many we wanted to All have. The time. All the time. And what we wanted to do with our money and what, how we wanted to operate in our budget. And yes, you're better, you're better at, I was a spender at first. Well, maybe still. And, but so Ron didn't want to do the bills though. He, he wanted to have control over it, but he didn't want to do them. I want to set the vision. I want you to execute it. Right. So this, for us, that's how it works. We is still I, do that. I pay the bills, but you still want to have knowledge of what's going on. This and you goes here. Yes, this goes absolutely. here. Absolutely. We're investing this. We're saving this. These are the bills. I'm, I, I got the vision of it. But now, hi, you've got that stuff online? Yes. I'm clueless. Proactive conversations about, okay, Ron, Ron goes to the gym four and five times a week. But there's never a time that he just strikes off and goes to the gym and stays gone three or four hours. And you don't have a clue where I'm and I don't, I don't a, answer my right. phone. No, it, Ron goes to the gym and I know he will be home between an hour and an hour and a 15 minutes from the, I mean, it's just already established. No That's surprises. the way it is. No there's surprises. No, surprises. no surprises. So if you will have those proactive conversations, big ones, broad ones, a couple of times a year, you know, what do we want to do this year with our finances? Are we wanting to save? Are we wanting to go on a big vacation this year? Okay, if we're wanting to go on a big vacation this year to Italy, okay, we've got to start in January. Or so, before. Ron, how are we going to do our money this year so that we can make this happen? These are all things that you talk this about. Good. This is good. From the beginning. Then there's personal conversation. This is what Ron and I do every morning at coffee time. This is 30 to 60 minutes a day that you have to have for personal conversation that takes it from the broad to the daily to what are we gonna do today? What time you think you'll be home tonight? And it's, it is business oriented, but it also knows, it also sends you a message I want to be intimately involved in the details of your life. So that nothing's overlooked. Yeah. Like, what's your day look like today? Are we going to cook today? Or are we going to go out? You want me to meet you in Pleasanton? Or you want me to meet you in San Jose? And then you say, he's reading all day. I'll cook. Baby doll, I don't want you to cook. You've been, you've been, you're, you're, you're like mind numb all day long. Let me get you out, get you a different atmosphere, sit outside and eat some And if you hair. don't do that every day, you are not in touch with your spouse's emotional thermometer. You're just not. You can sit down and look at them in the eye every day if you do this in the morning, at night, whenever you choose to do it. You know what's going on in their life. You know, you know when their demeanor changes. You know how they're feeling and what they're thinking, and you get into each other's heart. This is right there. That's that personal communication. And then the last one is intimate communication. That is five to 15 minutes a day that need to be the snuggles, that need to be the hugging and kissing and flirting and laying your head on their shoulder. Smacking you, honey. Smacking that tail. All those things that you do that are intimate. That's how you communicate. When you look at them in the eye and say, I love you so much. Man, you look good today. Let me tell them what I did this morning. Oh, God. <laughs> Hope was aggravated with me because I woke her up twice last night. Hope. Why did you wake me up, Hope, you Hope, said? You no, said I was no, snoring no, yes, like no, a freight train. I wasn't going to go there. Anyway, I, I, I didn't try to wake her up. Hope has My this little... My tail was tired. Yeah, Hope has this little thing. If you touch her, she'll quit snoring. Because why? Because it's, you wake it's me up. It's the weirdest thing. I mean, I can literally take my hand, lay oh, it on Oh, you touch me in the middle of the hip. night, and what, you expect anyway, me not to wake up? Anyway, it's not that drastic, but, la but last, oh, night I drastic. last night I woke her up, so we weren't having no arguing up, but she's that, 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 that was aggravating to her when I wake her up. She don't like to be woke up. So I knew it this morning, <laughs> and uh, not being mean, but I could just tell she was aggravated. And so she's in there getting ready. Man, I could look at you all day. You started your hair. I said, you're, you sure are pretty. 
words are really not your love. Words are always powerful. Yes. But there's a difference between powerful and love language. I mean, yes, you want to be complimented. That's Everybody wants to be complimented. But you were getting ready to leave, and your bag is like a weapon. <laughs> it's like 60 to 80 pounds. It's like carrying a barbell <sighs> down the hall. So Ron, she was, what was in my she, bag? Well, she was leaving. Well, you got your computers and your books and your notebooks. Thank and stuff. You. But it is a very heavy. So I'm sitting there. You were leaving before me this morning, which don't happen a lot of times, but it did happen this morning. And you had all this stuff, and I was sitting there and still enjoying my coffee. I wouldn't finish my coffee yet. And I looked, and I saw you handle it, and I walked up there. And I said, wait a minute. And I came. And you tell me if I'm right. And I took all that stuff out of your hands. I didn't say a word. And I carried your stuff to the car. I felt like that disarmed you. You was trying to get my forgiveness. Okay. But no, you softened. You didn't soften when I said, well, you sure are pretty. You didn't soften. Mm -mm. But when I went and grabbed all your stuff, walked you to the car, unlocked your door, put the stuff in the trunk, this, that, and other, and I said, please be careful. You, cha you changed. That is learned over a period of time what is meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. That's nonverbal communication. It is. I didn't say a word. I had been saying a word. It might have moved the needle a little bit because you. I think you cracked a joke with me. But when I went over and relieved your burden, I said something to you much stronger. You did. Talk about nonverbal communication. We will. Right when we come back. We love our sponsor, Chime. They are amazing, and they will help you build your credit. So Listen, important. you can be just hopping through your summer all summer long with wonderful credit with Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. You can build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. Plus, there's no annual fees, interest, or credit check to get started. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash Ron and Hope. That's Chime.com slash Ron and Hope. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank in a member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply on-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Here we go. Well, did you so say here we are. We're going, we're going back right before we stopped and celebrated our guys. And please check out Chime if you hadn't done that. We're talking about nonverbal communication and how, you know, this is, I don't, if you're, if you're 27 and you've been married three months, this is a journey. It is a journey. But I'm going to tell you, I know me some hope. I've been with you 33 years and but dated you three years. I've been with you 36 years of my life. It's a long time. It really is. <laughs> and no, it don't take 36 years to know. But, you know, I know what speaks to you. I, I, I think I know for the most part what touches you deeply and what moves you. And I think there needs to be a house full of nonverbal communication Yeah, sometime. absolutely. Which, which you're sending messages and you're saying things, although you're not saying a thing. Yeah, it makes me so mad to watch guys <laughs> walk way out ahead of their wife or their girlfriend or, you know, just kind of, ooh, it makes Boy, me so of mine mad too. to watch <laughs> them just like disregard her. Get out of the car and just start walking. Right, and don't go help her get the kids out or go open the door for her. I mean, it speaks volumes. So sending a message. That there's no honor. And Sends you have message. always consistently been so good about doing that. Yep. We've had many friends where I've looked at you and said, look at him. Right. And I, it's all I can do to keep my mouth shut and not confront it because it bothers me so bad. Uh, and, 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 and what hurts me is that level of disrespect is normal. Right. In that relationship. That is nonverbal communication sending you a message that I'm going to take care of me. We uh, always hold hands when we get out of the car, no that, matter where we're that's walking. That's going to keep you right beside each other. Yes, if we're walking to a restaurant, going to the bank, going to the mall, coming into church, you're going to come around to the car, 
get me out, and we're going to hold hands and walk in. I remember I was frustrated in Italy because their sidewalks are this big. And we couldn't hold hands. And we had to walk one in front of the other, so I made you walk in front of me, and I walked behind you. <laughs> Kind of a good change. <laughs> it's a, it a nice, oh, it's a nice shift from the normal. Oh, Ronald, Ronald, Ronald! You think they know what we're talking about when I no, say like that? No, none of them know anything. But we're talking about. <laughs> okay, of course they know. That's why the Lord made yoga pants, isn't it? How did we drift? So far. Because you talked about holding hands, and I'm talking about nonverbal communication. Now, when I get behind you like that, I do start saying stuff, don't I? You do. We can't say that on Real Raw and Relevant, can we? I hope you don't. No. Okay. But I do say things. But the key, the one, key of, one of the keys sending to a, a message. A, <coughs> Ron, one of the keys to a healthy, <laughs> flourishing relationship is good communication. Okay. okay? Good communication. Talk to me about flirting. You have taken this thing down a rabbit hole. No, I'm talking about nonverbal of communication. sexuality. I'm not talking about sex. Yes, you I'm are. I'm talking about flirting. I, I flirted you. with you long before we had sex. Flirting. Oh, Does flirting stop once you get married? It shouldn't. Okay. What is something I do where you know I'm flirting with you? You'll send me text messages, emojis. <laughs> <laughs> you send emojis. <laughs> I can't tell people what you send, but you send emojis. Uh, <laughs> you'll lay things out at the house. Things you want me to wear. I do do that. Yeah. And I, do I have pretty good fashion sense with you? Oh, God. It's ridiculous. Don't I? You'll go get a pair of Aria, our granddaughter's shorts, and lay them out on the bed and say... <laughs> I need you to put these on. <laughs> Tell them what I did in the stores. We were in Italy. We went in one store, and I picked up this little pair of shorts. I said, do you have these in extra small? And the woman busted out laughing. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's flirting. <clears throat> that's flirting. Isn't it fun, though? It is fun. It is fun. But what ticks me off me? is when you do stuff like that and I'm mad. How do you throw me? That's when it's fun, no, real it funny. No, it is though. not. It is. No. Yep. It makes me so angry. How you flirt with me? How do I flirt with you? Right now. <laughs> when, <laughs> when I try to avoid you. <laughs> you know that's flirting. When you dance. Dance? Yep. Just like bebop around if the house. If we cut the chill music on it around the house and sometime I'll be sitting somewhere and if you ain't getting no attention. No, it's usually in a funny <laughs> way though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll sneak around a corner and you'll just see me. You, you'll get my attention, yep. I send you notes. You do. When you are, when you're traveling, I'll- They're the best. I'll do sticky notes and They're I'll put best. a hide them in your clothes. They're the best. In your pockets. You've even done that before. Hope This has been a while back. You've even done that in my sermon notes. Yeah. Now I preach off of electronics. Now I preach off an iPad. When I used to literally have sermon notes, I would have like five or six pages of notes and I'd get like number four and you had written something. Yeah. Even in my message. And I remember one time in front of a packed house, I stopped and told everybody, I said, I just found a note and I read it and everybody went, oh, that, you know what? The whole thing is, everything we've talked about, the whole 30 minutes... What's the bottom line? ...is intentional. It's, it's putting that person, their wants, their needs, their thoughts, their feelings first and making it a part of something that you think about, that you talk about, that you include them in. And I said in the marriage counseling this morning, I said, I know it sounds like so much work. It's not work. I said... But it if becomes you culture. don't do these things, I said, you're going to spend the same amount of time in marriage counseling. Yeah. It, it's, it's work and it's intentional at first, but now it's natural. Right. It's just part of your life. Yeah. It's not like what I did, what, what I did this morning. That's, it wasn't work. That's who you are. That's kind of what we do. Yeah. That's kind of what we do. And, uh, you know, it's, you, you always, 
you know, I do usually protein shakes in the morning, but it, very rarely do you fail to ask me. I'll do cook you, you some yeah. breakfast if you want me to cook you something. And I normally say, babe, I'm just going to drink one of my protein drinks. But you asked me, do you want me to? And every once in a while I say, you know what? That would be good. But so, also when we get home at night, this is, uh, this is all nonverbal communication. I'll go run your bath. I don't ask. You don't ask me. I know when you've had a long day, you love to just go sit in that bathtub. And so I just go in there and start running it, and it ain't like I was trying to get brownie points. It ain't like you complimented me. It's just us talking all day without talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love it, and it's precious to me, but I don't want people to to know, man, it makes me feel like, well, we've been lo- we've been together a long time, yeah. and we don't get it all right. But I think we get it more right than we get it wrong. Yeah, we've we've grown, and I, that's why I think these podcasts can be so powerful. I mean, these this is gems of information that we. It really learned. is. It sounds so practical, but I'm telling you, but it's make seen, or break. We've seen train wrecks over yeah. the kind of stuff we're talking about right now. So proactive communication. That's the main thing. That was your phrase. Personal, and I think it's all intentional and proactive. Yeah, personal. Because, yep. Communication. That's the every day. That's the day. The intimate communication and the nonverbal. Nonverbal. And they all have to be learned and they all have to be practiced so that you can have an amazing marriage. Well, we've been over a half hour talking to these folks about how to communicate. Let's see what they can do. All right. Let's go for it. It's been good. I've enjoyed this one. This is very informative. Tell somebody about it. Subscribe. 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 Hit the like button. Hit the like. We need all of that we can get. Tell somebody about it because our goal is to come on here and have a little bit of fun, but at the same time, it'd be valuable information that might just help your life a little bit. All right. God bless you. Till next time, Ron and Hope Unfiltered.